Welcome back, everybody. Moving on to another question. So we have a dividend, 5x cubed minus 6x squared plus 2x minus 4. And it's divided by another polynomial. And that results in a quotient of 5x squared plus 9x plus 29 and a remainder of 83. And we have to find the divisor. Okay, so the first thing you want to do whenever you're given a question like this is you want to write out what the division statement is. So we know that the dividend is equal to what? The divisor times the quotient plus the remainder. So this is a pretty popular question that comes up. Now, you'll, you won't always be finding the divisor. So sometimes you'll be given one of the other three variables. Perhaps you're given the dividend, divisor, and quotient and you have to find the remainder. Or maybe you'll be given the divisor, dividend, and remainder, and you have to find the quotient. But in this case, notice we're given the dividend, we are given the quotient, and we are given the remainder. So we're gonna have to solve for this divisor here, right? And even if it didn't said find the divisor, let's say it said find the polynomial, because if you read the question, it says the dividend was divided by another polynomial. Well, when we're taking a dividend and we're dividing it by another polynomial, that other polynomial is always the divisor. So it didn't have to say find the divisor, but uh, you should be able to tell that that's what they are looking for. So let's plug everything in. So the dividend, let's uh, put it in brackets. So we got 5x cubed minus 6x squared plus 2x minus 4. I always like to put everything in brackets initially, just in case we have to move things around. It's easier to see what full units that we can move around. Now the divisor, we are solving for that. Quotient is given, that's 5x squared plus 9x plus 29. And then plus the remainder, the remainder is given as 83. So now this just becomes like a regular equation that we have to solve. So what you want to do is you want to pretend like this bracket, this bracket, this bracket, these are just their separate expressions. So you could pretend like they're even constants. So you have like five equals x, your variable that you're solving for times, I don't know, let's say three plus 83. So how would you solve for that x variable? Well, the first thing you do is you bring this expression over so you'd have 5x cubed minus 6x squared plus 2x minus 4 minus 83 because it's positive on the right side. So when we bring it over to the left side, it becomes negative. And then that's going to equal the divisor times that whole quotient still. And now that we have this, we're still trying to isolate for that divisor here. So what we can do is we can divide both sides by that expression that is attached to the divisor. So like this 5x squared plus 9x plus 29. So what we do to one side, we got to do to the other. So we'd have 5x squared plus 9x plus 29. So this cancels out with this. And then we are just left with the divisor here on the right side. And then notice how this numerator here, we can simplify this negative four and this negative 83, those are like terms. So we'd have five X cubed minus six X squared plus two X um, minus 87. And then we are dividing still by that uh, denominator, that new denominator on the left side that we have which is the quotient, 5x squared plus 9x plus 29. So now notice how the divisor, what we're looking for, is just equal to one polynomial divided by another polynomial. And since the polynomial that we are dividing by has a degree greater than one, we can only use long division. We can't use synthetic division. So that's what we'll do. We'll end up doing long division. But one thing I wanna mention, since I have this on the board at the moment, is notice how the brackets really help us. 
right? So whenever you're writing this out and then you're filling out the division statement, always put everything in brackets. It's gonna allow you to see each term separately and then it makes it easier for you to isolate whatever you are looking for. So taking that division expression that we had and then putting it into long division form, we're dividing this polynomial by this one and then the quotient that we're gonna get up here is gonna end up being the divisor. Now the quotient in this long division is different than the quotient we are given. Just be aware of that. This is now just like a separate process. But uh, what we get up here is going to be our divisor. So 5x squared goes into 5x cubed x times. So x times 5x squared is 5x cubed. x times 9x gives us 9x squared. <clears throat> and then x times 29 uh, gives us 29x. So if we subtract both of these, negative 6x squared minus 9x squared gives us negative 15x squared. Uh, 2x minus 29x gives us negative 27x. And then we can bring this negative 87 down. Okay, so how many times does 5x squared go into negative 15x squared? Uh, negative three times. So multiply the negative three by all of the terms in the divisor. And notice how when you subtract these now, everything will cancel out and you will get a remainder of zero. And you should always get a remainder of zero when you're doing this type of question and you're in the final step of finding that uh, expression when you have to do the division because that division statement is always going to hold. So when you isolate for one of the things, like we isolated for the divisor, there's no other remainder remaining. If you remember, we just got a nice smooth uh, fraction on that left side, which was this polynomial divided by this one. So there should be no remainder, so you should always get a remainder of zero. If you don't, then you know you went wrong somewhere before. You got to go back and find that mistake. So that is the answer. What is the divisor of this? Well, it is x minus 3. And then uh, if you really have time, it would take you quite a while, but um, you can check the division statement. So on the left side, we have the dividend. So we keep that as this. And then what you can do is you could take your divisor, multiply it by the quotient. So foil all that out and then add that remainder and you should end up getting this dividend here. And if you do, then you know that this divisor is correct. But if you follow this process and you get to this long division step at the end and you get a remainder of zero, you can be pretty confident that uh, you got the right answer. But again, if you have uh, extra time, you can um, use that time to check your answer, making sure the division statement holds.